I'm always ready. All right. We all good? Okay, well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome the winner of the 2023 Worldwide Technology Championship, Eric Van Royen. Eric, wow, that was quite the finish, quite the victory. Six birdies and an eagle on the 72nd hole. Yeah. Get the job done for a 9-under 63 today. If we could just get a couple of opening thoughts on collecting your second career PGA Tour title. don't really know where to start, to be honest. Um, quite numb uh, after that putt waiting on 18. Um, you know, you imagine yourself full of euphoria and uh, just being ecstatic, and I was just numb. Um, I think it's because of everything uh, the past sort of six days with uh, my friend John being so sick. Um, and I guess just the moment just not having hit me yet. Um, so, but now it's, it's slowly starting to sink in. Um, I mean, what a back nine. It's just an absolute blur in my mind. Boging, boging the first hole um, is never, never nice when you're, when you're in the final group. There was obviously a few nerves, but, um, you know, so boging the first hole is never nice. But just hung in there all day, just hung in there through the front nine, didn't hit it great, um, but made a few nice birdies. And then um, when I stepped onto 10, I feel like that hole with the tee moved up was, was just sort of made for me. And it's the perfect yardage, flashed the driver, made birdie and, and we were absolutely off. So um, incredible finish. I felt like with Camilo getting off to a hot start, with Matt making some putts, um, almost felt behind the eight ball a little bit. I remember on hole eight telling Alex um, I was in the right hand side of the fairway and I looked at him and I was like, you know, I, I really want to win this tournament. Um, but it's so hard to push. Um, sometimes when you push too hard um, in the wrong moments, it goes the other way. And funny enough, you know, we had that conversation and he told me, just stay the course. Just stay the course, hit the shot, you know, um, where we're looking, be super clear with your intention. And then I spray it right at the green. So it's funny how that works. Um, hit a really good chip. Um, and then the back nine, just like I said, an absolute blur. So um, I thought Matt was probably going to make birdie on 18. And, and when he didn't, um, when I hold that part, it was... I'm, I'm just I'm kind of speechless, to be honest. Well, it was quite impressive and fun to watch. With the win, you moved to 63 in the FedEx Cup. Um, I know John obviously has been one of the, for unfortunate reasons, certainly one of the, the big stories for the week yeah. with you. Um, you mentioned that every shot today, whether it was tee shot, fairway, or putt, before you pulled the trigger, you had him on, on your mind. Yep. Yep. Um, I know that's going to come up if you would care to share a few thoughts about him yep. and um, how he has inspired you. I know he was uh, part of your wedding, best man, yep. I heard. Yep. Um, so if, we, if you wanted to just comment on him. As a 19-year-old, when you leave your home country, it's never easy. And I left South Africa back in 2009. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a really small town. The golf course was not great. Um, and so leaving home wasn't easy. And uh, John and his family lived about two hours away from Minneapolis. And I arrived in Minnesota in September of 2009, and they were there at the airport to meet me and to, to, to say hi, because he was going to be my roommate and teammate um, soon after we obviously became best friends. So um, we were roommates for three out of the four years I was in college. Um, I still think he's got one of the best short games I've ever seen. Uh, he pursued a career in golf uh, up until recently, obviously. Um, so he's, he's really like a brother to me. Um, 
John was diagnosed with stage four melanoma uh, about a year ago, maybe a bit more, sort of end of summer last year. Um, he was clean in April. I remember I was at RBC Heritage in um, Harbour Town, and when he gave me the call and he sent me a picture of the scan and he was free of cancer. Um, so obviously that was an incredible moment for all of us. And not soon after it came back, you know, and, and I knew it was going to be an uphill battle. Um, and on Tuesday, he sent us a text that he's got six to ten weeks left. And uh, they did a bunch of scans and cancer was in all his organs um, everywhere. And I don't think he's got that much time left. Um, so we were flying up to Minnesota tomorrow to go see him. Have you had a chance to speak to him via text or anything as of yet? I imagine he was watching. Yeah, I hope he's watching. We've texted. Uh, I've just told him how much I love him and how much I miss him. And all I want is to go play nine holes with him somewhere, you know. Uh, and extremely selfishly that puts all of this into perspective um, is it fun to win golf tournaments yeah it's fun I mean, I've been playing golf since I was eight years old I'm extremely competitive uh, and we want to win but it doesn't matter when I'm you know when I kick the bucket one day whenever that might be this is not what I'm going to be thinking about I'm going to be thinking about the people that I love the most. And John Chasma is one of those people. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, looking at your coming into the week, if I could just get some thoughts on how well you felt like you've been playing. It looked like your last 20 rounds, 18 of 20, have been at par or better. Yeah. Um, so you must have been feeling good about the game coming into the week. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's been a trying year up until about two months ago. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, the, the worst um, year of my career to date. And struggling with golf. And um, made a coaching change. Started working with Sean Foley the week of the US Open. And um, we started turning things around. I, I went and played over on the DB World Tour, played in Switzerland. Uh, I think we finished top 10 there, played Irish Open the week after, finished 16th. And we've just slowly been, been building momentum. Um, I was sick last week. I was in bed in, in, in Florida. So I didn't even hit that many balls. Um, I came here, uh, arrived on Monday, Tuesday. I was, I was hooking the ball 20, 30 yards left. Um, but you just go back to the basics. Um, I've been doing such good things. I've been putting great. Um, chipping is not the best part of my game, but that's getting better. Um, I've been driving it so well, and, and iron play is probably my strongest suit. Um, and this course is a second shot golf course. You know, there's wide fairways, sort of a lot of the greens have sort of pockets where you got to place your ball into, and, and it really just fit my game perfectly. So. Coming into this week, um, I knew I was playing well, and um, yeah, you have a day like today, and everything just goes your way. Okay, well, with that, we will take a few questions. We'll start right here, and then we'll come over to you. Sorry, you you, you were talking about here. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, the the process of coming in 2009 and adapting to America, and kind of you started playing PGA Tour recently. And there was a struggle, and I wonder if it has to do with adapting to the PGA Tour and finding your way here. No? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I went, I graduated in 2013. I went home to South Africa, started on the Sunshine Tour. Um, 2017 played Challenge Tour, then 2018 European Tour. So, you know, um, I certainly wasn't the, the, the Rory McElroys of the world where you're winning majors in your early 20s. Um, but. I've slowly been, been building my career and, and, and taking steps towards fulfilling my own potential, you know, and I think certainly I started playing PJ Tour like midway through 2019. I think I 
played a few events on top 50 in the world ranking and playing some majors and um, I think I certainly there was certainly a sense to me when I got my card that I kind of have to prove myself and that's tough pressure to, to, to live with and play with um, because the best players in the world are playing the PJ Tour you know um, and I've kind of come to peace with that uh, and um, I'm playing fantastic golf again I know um, the caliber of golf I can play so getting this win is, is very sweet that sorry oh, about that is I mean you've been in contention in the last few weeks do you feel like you're finding your way back to where you were three yes. years ago yeah. absolutely um, I think in 2020 at some point I was 40th in the world so I think that was my best ranking to date and then injuries happen and life happens and things go south um, and when it's such a funny game because when when things don't go your way you can kind of find yourself in a hole and you're like you feel like I'm never going to play well again and when you play well you feel like you, you're never going to play poor again you know so just trying to stay level-headed and, and riding the wave um, and knowing that regardless of what happened today, next week, there's another tournament to compete in. So just trying to get a little bit better every day and chip away at this game called golf. And um, I know I'm good enough to do what I did today and, um, you know, things like this happen. Oh, go ahead, Adam. <coughs> That was quite the long bro hug on 18 with Alex. What did the two of you guys share at that moment? Uh, he was just crying, um, which is funny because I'm by far the, mo the more emotional one of the two. Um, I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve, and he is sort of stoic. And um, where is he? He was in the room somewhere, but. Um, yeah, okay, he's outside. He was, he's, he's the one that keeps me somewhere in the middle. You know, I can be over here and over here. So um, I just consoled him, to be honest. Um, it's been, like everybody knows now, it's been a heavy week for, for the both of us. And then um, to win, and it, it just all, like, all came out. So I just consoling him and hugging him. And yeah. Yeah. And, um you Speak a, up, sorry. Yeah, you mentioned a music note that you had on the golf ball yeah. this week. What was the significance of that, and, and John? Um, yeah, so I used to have a line on the ball um, and when I used to putt, or when I putt, and I don't use the line anymore. So somewhere in this year, like earlier in the year, we decided to just change it up. So we each took three balls and just came up with something, and he came up with the music notes, and I, I've been playing guitar my whole life. Um, so... He came up with a music note, and I loved it, you know, because guitar is something I do away from the course, brings me a lot of joy, so that's what the music note's about. And then we, I put JT, John Trasma, on the ball as well, just, you know, as a dedication to him. Sean Foley most helped you with? Perspective. Um... I wasn't hitting it that bad when I started working with him, but um, I wasn't getting great results. I was, I was missing cuts. I think at one point I missed 10 cuts in a row. Um, so I think what makes Sean so great is, yeah, he's got this awesome knowledge about the golf swing and the human body and, and how the body functions and how to get the club square in the ball. Um, but just perspective. When we talk sometimes it's an hour and we don't even talk about golf um, we talk about life and the person you want to be um, how you want to be on the golf course you know not being uh, an idiot out there and uh, being the person off the course um, and being the same person on the golf course um, and that, that's been a bit of, that's really the conversations we've had you're right over here Hi, Eric. First of all, congratulations Thank for you. uh, your win. Where did where it was the turning point for you where you thought for the first time you could actually win this tournament? 
Um, 16. When I made that part on 16. Probably 15, actually. <laughs> you know, 15 is just a gnarly green. Um, so much slope. Um, and the funny thing is, left is dead, right? Obviously, Cooch made eight there yesterday. Um, but if you hit it too far right up the slope, it rolls all the way off the green. So there's a small window that you can hit it in to get it close to the pin. And that was the plan, and I, I kind of pulled, drawed it, and still to this moment, I don't know how it stayed up. And we both kind of looked at the sky, and, and we were like, you know, maybe it's you know written in the stars. So when that happened, I was like, ooh, we, we might have a chance. And then you make the one on 16, and the adrenaline starts pumping a bit, and then you make the one on 17, and man, now you're right in it. Anything can happen on 18. So I think 15, and especially 16. Tony, uh, congratulations here. Um, what do you think about the trophy? I think it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's quite a lot of detail, actually. There's a whale, there's a dolphin in here. Um, yeah, it's absolutely stunning, and I, I don't think I'm ever not going to like a trophy that I win. <laughs> you can go right in the second row back here. Hi, uh, con congratulations on your win. Can you talk us about your second shot on number one? It felt that, like yeah. it will never left the pin, but yeah. it ended up on the, on the, on the um, I kind of pulled that just a little bit. You know, um, we talked about that bunker and where the pin is, and the bunker was always okay. Um, but I tried to hit it kind of up the chute, up the right, because the whole green slope's right to left. And the club I had was never really going to get to the flag, so I tried to play it right of it, and it just overturned a bit into the bunker and a bit of a funky stance and tough to get to the ball and it was so far up the slope with so much sand um that it made the bunker shot quite a bit trickier and as you remember i mean i just went straight underneath it you know so much sand left it in the bunker and make six so you kind of wake up a little bit <laughs> a bit of a shock to the system and then i made that putt on number two so it's it's a funny game isn't it <laughs> Anybody else? Don't mess with beer. Fire away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Why did you hit the driving iron on 18? Because my three wood can reach this, the bunker on the left. Um, and that's just a no go. It gives me no chance to get to the green. So I. I it didn't really hit that iron well, even. It kind of flared out to the right. I uh, tried to hit like a, like a driving draw that rides the wind that gets kind of maybe 20, 30 yards further down the hill. Um, but yeah, if I, if I catch the three wood just well enough, it runs into that fairway bunk on the left, and that's just dead. So even if I miss the two iron like I did, it still gives me a chance to go for the green. So. What does it, fe what does it feel like to hit the shot you want to hit when you got to hit that shot, you feel like anyway, on 18? It's nothing quite like it in, in life, you know. Um, yeah, that shot will be with you f forever. Um, that, that three wood I hit on it, it's a, it's, a, it's a hybrid, but it's like my three wood. It goes like 268 in the air. We had 272 to the front, and I was thinking two iron, the same club I had off the tee would cover the bunker, but it, there's no chance he would get to the green. And you're trying to win a golf tournament, so you've got to step up and hit a golf shot. And Feely, that's his nickname. His name's Alex, but his nickname's Feely. Feely told me, he's like, dude, you've hit the shot a million times, right? On the first hole of the tournament, on hole one, um, I hit a perfect little fade hybrid in there onto the green. He's like, it's the same shot. And when he said that, it was like, okay, this is easy. Go time. And I flushed it. Jeff? Yeah, uh, Eric, if you could, just, just a couple. And if you could answer in uh, Afrikaans for our partners, that'd be great. Not dealing. Fuck for the air. If you could just talk about um, just the win this, this week, what it means to you, and just the incredible back nine that you had. Um, 
Ja, jy weet, jy droom jou hele leven lang om, om toernooie soos hierdie te win. Um, en ek denk, so die laaste paar weke was ongelooflik, want uh, Springbok het die wereldweker gewen. Springboks won the World Cup, I've got to say that in English for everybody, no, Springboks won the World Cup, Springbok het die wereldweker gewen, uh, last week saterdag, my sene wees is klaar, um, Protea is veel ongelooflik die cricket, en um, hulle inspireer mens, hulle inspireer mens, en um, om, om al wat ek sien is video's van Sia Kulisi en Jacques Nienaber en Kous Rassi wat praat van Zuid-Afrika en wat het vir die mense beteken en is ongelooflik inspirerend. So, um, ja, ek denk altyd aan hulle, ek denk altyd aan Zuid-Afrika wanneer ek golf speel en um, ja, dit is waar ek vandaan kom, hulle waar ek nie meer baie tyd al spandeer nie. Um, dit is waar my mense is en um, ja, Bokke het gewen, ek het gewen, hoopelik kan die Proteas ook ben. Hi Eric, congratulations for your title. I want to ask you what uh, does Mexico has that you always play really well here? I remember in 2012 you finished third on WGC at Mexico City. That was 2020, I think 2012. 2020, I was still in, 2020, 2020, yeah, 2020 and, yeah. and now you, you win here. Um, well, if I... I was going to say something like it's got to be the tequila, but that's not the real answer. Um, if I think back on the WGC um, in Chapultepec, that golf course is so similar to the type of golf that I grew up playing in South Africa, especially in Johannesburg. You know, tree-lined, it's at altitude, um, similar to Johannesburg. So the ball goes same distance, same grass, kukuyu grass, like bent grass green. So I just felt right at home. Um, this week... Um, like I mentioned in my, in my opening statement, it's, it's sort of a second shot golf course. Everybody's going to hit fairways. Um, from there on out, it's getting it close to the hole, and, and iron play is a strong suit of mine. So it, it really just played right into my strengths. So, um, yeah, uh, I love coming to Mexico. I love Mexican food. Uh, it's honestly just a great place to come and play golf, and now I've got a trophy to go with it. So, so following that on that, not just Mexico, but Los Cabos. What was yeah. your favorite of thing of Los Cabos here? This week? Um, I guess just the fact that it's by the ocean. I love the ocean. Um, you know, I'm going home to South Africa in like a month or so, and I'll be by the ocean. It's, I absolutely love, especially where I live. I live in Jupiter, Florida. I go to the beach all the time. So it's, it's, it's extremely beautiful. The sunsets are amazing. So... Um, it makes for a beautiful setting for PJ Torment. Eric, uh, does it make it like a little bit more special the fact that you are the first champion in this course designed by Tiger, by Tiger Woods? Yeah, it does. Um, I, I saw Tiger was here earlier in the week, um, kind of with the opening ceremony. Um, you know, He's obviously an absolute legend of the game. Um, and to play on a golf course that he's designed and to win a PJ tournament that is somehow in a small part linked to, to him, uh, it's extremely special. Anybody else? All good? Okay, well, Eric, congratulations. Thank you. It was an extraordinary week, and I know you'd prefer to be a better best friend than the winner of the tournament, but it is still incredible that you won Thank the tournament you. in the fashion you did. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Gracias. You made it. <laughs> made it, Doug. Yeah. Right? yeah, I'm okay. I'm good. Thank you. Where are we off to next? I'm actually... Now that I'm a little older, they want me bouncing back and forth between the Champions Tour and the regular tour. <laughs> okay.